Hey everyone, welcome back to the Distinct Mastering YouTube channel. My name is Freddy. Today, we're gonna to be talking about K-metering. This might be a very new concept for a lot of you, but it is a very game-changing mix tactic that I have been employing in my mixes. So I'm gonna show you a cool trick to overcome this and build in some headroom into your mixes, and it's just gonna make things so much better. Let's get into it. Okay, before we begin, let's talk about what K-metering is. K-metering was developed by the famous mastering engineer, Bob Katz. And essentially, most meters, including peak meters, which show peak value, or RMS meters, which show overall value of loudness. Unfortunately, peak meters don't really tell you a lot about loudness overall, and that's kind of where K-metering comes into play. So K-metering was developed by Bob Katz to discourage extreme loudness, and it's a good standard for setting monitor levels as well as calibrating your monitors in your room which is a whole nother topic in its own but today we're not talking about calibrating your monitors to your room which is a very good thing to do and if you're curious you could drop a comment down below or just do a quick youtube search if you have some more advanced equipment it might be something you could consider we're going to actually be talking about employing k-metering in our daw sessions and you might be wondering how you do this and what you're going to need is you're going to need a meter that can employ k-metering alongside it so before we get into what k-metering actually is let's talk about our daw faders here we are in ableton and i want to show you something something that you need to consider is all of these daws faders these mixers are logarithmic meaning they perform best when they are closest to zero so when you've got tracks that are like your volume your your faders way down here it's just not that good for the mixer. Yes, it's common practice, but I'm gonna show you an alternative method. Let me show you this. If I'm at zero and I go minus six, you see it, it took that far to go. And we can keep going down to, so let's go minus 12. Okay, you see these, these points here. They're, they're pretty far, but when I get down, say, to minus 36, and I want to go, let's go minus 36, and I want to go to minus 42, it, it's a much shorter path. If I want to go even further, let's go six more, minus 48, you could see 48 right there. It's a shorter distance from here to here. So what that means is the faders are more precise the higher you go up. And what we can employ is a K metering system to build in headroom into our mix. Now this is not going to replace quality sound selection good production, good EQ moves, things like that. But what this will help you do is build in some headroom into your mixes and get you an overall quality mix that can be brought up in loudness later. Now, what you're gonna need to do this tactic is you're gonna need a meter that can do the K-metering system. There's a good one by Voxango Span and it is free. So I suggest you go to Voxango. I'll leave you a link down below, you can get that. And once you download the plugin, you can go ahead and drop that on your master bus. And what we will do is we're going to just have this thing sitting right here. And as you can see, I've, I've stretched it out a little bit so you can see it. What you need to do is you need to change the metering system here from DB full scale. As you can see, they have the K20, K14, K12 standards I was speaking about. And this is important. They also have K20 C weighted scales. You don't need to worry about C weighted. That would be when you're trying to calibrate your room, you need to use C weighted and that's a whole nother topic in its own. What we're gonna use and I recommend for dance music is the K14 scale, K minus 14. And as you can see what just happened, zero. Let's go back to DB full scale. So DB full scale, zero is right here. When I go to K minus 14, it changed to down here. So now we have all this extra headroom before we actually hit zero in the digital domain. You might be wondering, where am I going with this? Well, stay tuned, because it's gonna get game changing. Okay, so what I wanna show you, I've zeroed out the faders for both the kick and the top kick, and I want to, you, you see the volume here is minus 12, what you could do, you could do this if you have a sample dropped into your session, you could do this on the sample clip level, 
But basically what you need to do is you need to pull up, you want to solo this out, make sure your fader's at zero, and you, you see here that this whole thing is just loud, even with the lowered K metering. So what I want to do is I want to drop this, and you could do it here, or you could do it, if you have plugins after that are boosting volume, you need to gain stage this along the way. But let's take this down to say minus 18 and see how it's doing. Still hot. So I'm going to take this down to minus 24. We're getting closer to zero there, but I'm still peaking at minus five. So as you can see, it's pretty loud kick. Now the reason why it was getting, even at minus 26, the reason why it was getting so, still so loud is because I have bus processing. So I'm not taking that into account. And that is why I'm gonna go back to minus 12 and I'm going to turn all this off first and foremost. And th this plugin is going to mess this up a little bit. So we're going to take this minus 18. Still hot. Okay, minus 26. I'm getting close to zero there. Minus 27, there we go. Now, let's take this one off, solo this one. Whoops. Now we're gonna do the same thing here. So I have uh, the last thing on the chain. So I'll just throw on a, it looks like I have this clipping tool. So I'm going to do it here. All right, let's bring that up. Okay, now, before the bus processing, let's turn everything else off. I don't want to listen to all this stuff right now. Now I'm going to turn everything off here. We're going to basically redo this. So now I can freely mix my kick and my top kick. And you should be doing this along the way. That's why, you know, this session's already built out and it did not employ the K-metering session. Now, Kick Tweak adds a lot of EQ. I made a video on this, I'll leave you a link down below. So, once again, I suggest that you end up throwing on a utility here. And if we've got a filter, we'll move that over here. We could turn on this EQ. You could also use the gain here if you don't want to add another plugin. Maybe you're using a lot of system resources. But you could see we're a little over zero. So, so it's, you could use the utility and just go minus two. There we go. So there, our kick bus is, is now gain staged. And that's what we want. Next, we're going to go do this with the other effects here. So let's start with this one. Whoops, sorry about that. So we're going to solo this. We'll just take the EQ, drop this down. Another way to do that would obviously be in the session itself. So if I've got this clap right here, you know, you could do it at this stage and just lower the clips. So there's a few ways to get to the same place. So we're peaking a little over zero on the right. We'll just go minus four. Okay. And you're seeing now, I have, oh wait, I apologize. Once again, you need to zero out the fader. 
So let's do that again. Let's solo this. If you don't, you're gonna screw this up. And I was, that just goes to show. Minus, okay, so that goes to minus 12. So we're gonna zero that out. We're gonna put a utility. We're still a little hot. Getting close there. Minus 21. Let's do minus 20. There we go. Now for this one, we need to solo. All right, we got a 909 snare with a ton of verb. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're gonna drop a utility and I'm going to just drop this down. Let's start with 24. Very close, let's do a little more. There we go. All right. And you see, I'm mixing now much closer to zero. Let's keep going. I didn't even actually check this one yet. Let's do that now that we have these in place. Because we didn't turn these on. So if you've got bus processing, you're gonna wanna make sure you gain stage that too. We're pretty close right there. We'll just go minus two. There we go. So our whole bus is now gain staged. All right, we're gonna move on to this one. Uh, there's nothing here. I did that on the last video. Let's take this one. Uh, I'm gonna turn off all the plugins here. And remember, you're probably going to be working prior to these buses being in place. So just gain stage this as you bring in your sounds in. That's the tactic. There we go. There's that one. Let's take a look at this one. I've got a looks like it's just getting a little edge. So it's a little low, probably because it's fader. Yep. Let's keep going. That's better. We can, then you can mix from there. All right, we've got this top loop. Uh, let's take this down to minus six. Not enough. Let's go minus 12. Still a little hot. What am I looking for? I'm looking for that white line. I'm going with the white line. I'm getting all these peaks in place. And you really don't need to be any further than maybe minus 12, minus 14 at this point because everything is perfectly weighted out with everything is gain staged along the way and you're building in headroom. Next. little low let's go minus 22 perfect okay so we got all these tops in place I'm gonna do uh, there's no boosting here so we should be fine but just to be sure it's a little hot so you can put on a utility and if you wanted to gain stage this even a little bit more you could there we go 
So once again, I didn't really touch much of these faders yet. But you see, uh, it's just getting much easier to mix. And because I'm actually setting a standard, I'm making all these sounds the same volume before I'm actually hitting my faders, which is making my mix on my mixer much easier because I'm working at a much higher resolution on the mixer. Let's keep going here. All right, so. There we go. We'll try minus 18. There we go. And I bet you this one. Let's mute all these. For the purpose of saving time, I'm not even going to get into much more than these next two for the percussion because I want to keep this video moving and I'm doing the same things here. So I think you get the idea. Let's take this shaker. It's very close. Okay. There we go. And you see how quickly it sounds very balanced. Let's get the bass in here real quick. Uh, I can probably turn this back on. There's not much going on there, just a little side chain. Okay, first things first, I'm gonna zero this out because I didn't do this when I made this track. Delete that. And we're gonna go for this again. So, we'll go ahead and start with one. Uh, you don't need to do it with a utility. You could actually do it from the plug-in or you could do it here, but I'll just, for the sake of doing it this way, you could lower the plug-in volume is another way to do it. It's very loud. Boom. It's got like a live bass on this one. Boom. Now that's with all this bus processing too. I guess I should have muted those. But we could we still got in the ballpark. And look, my faders are at zero, so I could drop this. Sounding pretty balanced. So I'm not gonna go through all the tracks in this. This is how you employ the K-metering tactic in your mixes. And really, you can do it this way after the fact, but the best approach is to build it in as you're building your track. Pay attention to this stuff as you add new sounds. Lower the sound's amplitude from the source. Build in the headroom along the way. You're gonna have a much more polished, punchy, and balanced mix when you gain stage all of this as you go. And then really what you're gonna be left with is 
getting your final stuff done with your mix, doing all the nice carving of space and getting everything in the right space and all the mixing stuff you need to do. This is not going to circumvent that. But at the end of the day, it's just going to make your mixes much easier and getting a good overall balance. And then, you know, you just do your mastering or send it off to your mastering engineer and they're going to love your, your mix for it because you've built in headroom. You're not going to have all this stuff eating up things. It's just a great way of working and I love it. So I hope this helps you out. If you have any questions about this, please shoot me a comment down below. So I hope this really helps you out. If you have any questions on the K-Metering system, please drop me a comment down below. And please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and the bell notification will keep you up to date. If you need help with your mastering, I offer first time potential clients one free stereo mastered sample. Just check the link down below. My name is Freddie from Distinct Mastering and have a great day.